Hi everyone. Uh, almost six years ago, I was standing on a stage very much like this one. But as I organized the TEDx conference in Montenegro, I had a quite different role. And if you ask me right now, I would say that it was much easier for me at least to organize the whole event than to be standing and talking here now. However, today I'm here to talk to you about women's position in business, especially in the Balkans region. But even though I like this song, the song with this name, I'll try to show you that it's actually not a man's world. My career started in journalism, where for a couple of years I roamed around in all types of media, until the point where I was 24, shifted my focus from journalism to marketing and had my first managerial position. Uh, first as a social media manager, and then as an account manager at the Montenegrin's office of McKen Global Creative Agency. While I was working with clients such as Hilton Hotels, Hard Rock Cafe, Calvo, Beck Hotel, Ecom, Carlsberg Group, and so on and so on, I was working on organizing TEDx Podgorica conference in Montenegro. And it all together felt like having two full-time jobs. So from this point now, when I look back at that time, I have no idea where I found the confidence or even believe that I can do all that. But you have no idea how far you can get when you have to. And after all that, I decided to move to London to finish my master's studies, because in the Balkans region, you need to have a paper for everything. So among other reasons, I felt like I wanted an educational background in marketing, even though I was already successfully working in the field. Then before my return home from the UK, I received a completely different job offer general manager of a co-working space that would open a couple of months after my return home. And to be very honest with you, it was the very first time that I had a second thought, or we can call it even fear, whether I'm ready to do something. Just some of the things that crossed my mind at that time were, what the hell do I know about business, first of all? Am I ready to lead the company? To make things worse, co-working to this day, so three years later, is still not a widely popular industry in the country. And we can consider it a blue ocean market. On top of that, to make things even worse, we prepared everything and opened our co-working space one day before the first lockdown and all other COVID restrictions in the country. I can laugh at it now, but back then, it didn't make any sense to promote something like co-working in times when even companies are working their way from home. Then two, ways, two years into my engagement in the company, I attended a seminar. And all participants there were asked three questions. They were simple ones, but they make you think, you know? So it was, how would we describe ourselves five years ago? At that very moment, and where do we see ourselves five years into the future? After lots of thinking, I described myself at that time as a creative stuck in business. And you know the moment when you hear yourself saying something. So when I finally put it into words and said it out loud for the very first time, I needed some time to think creative stuck in business through. And then I actually realized that I was probably the best choice for that position because only a creative person can swim through all this and build a successful business. How successful I realized when I received Business Elite Under 30 Award for 30 leaders under the age of 30 in Southeast Europe. I believe that uh, all of those thoughts that I had were only there because at the time I had a lack of experience in the field, going into something new, something completely unknown for me, and still having a huge amount of responsibility. But never ever a single doubt crossed my mind because I'm a woman. And there are a couple of backgrounds to that. First of all, I can safely say that in all my jobs so far, I've been very lucky with those superior to me. I knew that every now and then as a person in my 20s, plus a female, some people might not get me seriously right away. But my mentors never let me sit on the side. It happened many times that when I go for a meeting, I don't get the same eye contact as my male director sitting next to me until the point that I open my mouth for the first time. 
At that point, they would realize that I know actually how to do and speak business. But I wouldn't say that this is man's fault, because it certainly is not. For me, it happened as many times that when I go for a meeting, if I'm not the only female person in the room, the other one is usually a girl sitting on the side, making notes, and there are two times when we can hear her voice. At the very beginning, when she introduces herself, and then in the very end, when we say goodbyes. So it's not even enough to memorize the tone of her voice. So when you see it like that, it somehow seems that women sometimes make themselves an equal part of conversations, meetings, business deals, and so on. To me, it also happened that, used to happen, when I go for a meeting, uh, the person asks me right away what my position in the company is right away. Uh, and don't get me wrong, the question like that is not the problem, but the body language of the person is. I get right away the feeling that the person asks me that with the sole purpose of knowing how much importance to give me. It's all based on my position. And of course, they don't expect general manager to be the response since they established my gender and more or less my age. So if you haven't been lucky so far with mentors, managers, directors, leaders, and so on, I would suggest you to change your surroundings and your work environment. Because even if it sometimes seems like it's flattering to be sitting at the big table, if you're not appreciated at that same table, you need to move somewhere where that will be the case. Even if it seems like it's impossible, even in the Balkans, I can tell you from my own experience that it is possible. And now I will give you one example. Some time ago, I spoke to a person that was quite the opposite from everyone I mentioned so far. It was a director of a huge IT company back home. And I told him that I had huge appreciation for him because I find the first impression to be very important. On the other hand, he was one out of not that many that gave me the same attention and the same eye contact without knowing a single thing about me including my position in the company. And then, to my surprise, he was surprised with my comment, because from his point of view, he expected everyone to behave like him, like we all do, I guess, sometimes. And then he added something that made me wonder. He said that he would always rather hire a female manager, because we are naturally better at multitasking, research, and strategizing. So hearing this, it dawned on me. Women, uh, a leader or a manager has everything that has a woman, but we still doubt ourselves sometimes. For example, for multitasking, I can't imagine myself doing one thing at a time unless there is a bug around me. In that case, my whole focus is on the bug. Otherwise, besides sleeping and being aware of the insects around me, I always do two or more things at the same time. It's something natural to women. Second, research. Uh, a friend of yours comes to you regarding a new crush that she has, for example, and she has no idea how to find more about him. So naturally, you put your FBI glasses on, research online, dig deep, and even call friends for referencing. So both quantitative and qualitative research right away. Also something natural to us. And third, strategizing. Did he call? How long did it take him? What tone did he use? Whatever happens, women have action plans ready to use. It's also in our nature. So somehow, we already have all of this in our DNA, but sometimes we forget to put it into good use. If we go back, I believe that from an early age, we haven't been the equal, uh, given the equal treatment. Me, as an ordinary girl in the Balkans, I've been taught most of my life that financial independence is one of the most important things. Result of that is that I became a strong, independent woman. However, it's quite natural for a Balkan guy to be 30 and still live with his parents. Or if you've, if you've seen the movie behind me, it's not just in the Balkans. And even when I look at my family, uh, my mother, she would be on your left side, managed to raise two kids, my sister and myself, do all the errands, help wider family, do her job. Just a regular day. My uncle, on your right side, has a typical Balkan mom-slash-son relationship, 
and has had everything already prepared for him his whole life. Unfortunately, it's not just the case with my family and it's more of a rule rather than an exception. But if a woman, especially an ordinary woman, can do all of this in 24 hours, how come it's natural for her to lead a company or even a country? If we go even further, as much as I love Disney, every single one of them, I have to admit that most Disney princesses are not role models in many ways. Me, I never wanted to be Cinderella. I know that she got, I don't know, transformed over the night, she got the prince in the end, blah, 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 blah. But what I've seen most even as a child was that she was pushed around a lot. So I'm happy that my favorite one, even as a kid, was Megara from Hercules, and even before I ever became a redhead. Um, so somehow, women sometimes seem as fragile and as if they need to be saved. Even with my past relationship once when the, the light went off in one of the rooms, I went to change it because it was something normal to me. When my boyfriend at the time realized what I was doing, he came and removed me from the chair that I have already stepped on and changed it instead of me. But me as a woman, I don't need a guy to change the light bulb for me, to open a jar for me, to reach anything for me. I'm pretty tall, as you can see, and I can do it completely on my own. So same rules apply both in life and in business. We as women can do it, we just need to start believing that we can. And then there is also that the fact that it's not the easiest thing to be a female leader, especially in the Balkans, and that some roles are unfortunately more male-oriented, especially when you live in countries that use gender-sensitive languages. So for example, here in the Balkans, when we hear the word leader or manager, our mind automatically thinks of a man, because it's normal. But if Morgan Freeman was successfully portrayed as God, despite the typical stereotype of a white God, why the first person that comes to your mind when you hear the word leader can't be a woman? Because whether it comes to politics, whether it comes to science, whether it comes to business, women can lead in all industries. We just need to change our mindsets. So now I would like to get back to the song from the very beginning. Even if it, if it seems to you as a woman that sometimes it's man's world, I can assure you that it would never be the same without a woman or a girl in it. And lastly, I've been called brave many times in my life, including the time when I accepted to work in business. The very last time that I was called brave was when I colored my hair blue. Might not be the best thing to experiment with your hair one month before delivering TEDx speech, but I still think it's better to be standing here like this than to have more, more red with all of this red around me. Or even with my outfit today. A couple of days ago, I actually went outfit shopping. I bought a dress and then I set it aside because I closed more business deals in Converse than I ever have and than I ever will in high heels. So whatever happens, always do what you think is right. And next time when someone, or even a quiet voice in your head, tells you that you can't do something, you can tell them this. Thank you.